what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will discuss on something which many of you have been requesting me from some recent days and i was also thinking to make a video on this earlier but finally now i have decided because uh, i am uh, planning to call some other guests also in my channel so i am thinking that i will request them also to speak on this yes because this is a very important topic and there are many misconceptions about this so i want that i speak about this now and then some other guests when they come they can also speak uh, on this topic yes and so what's the topic so the topic which i'm going to speak now is how to balance our material and spiritual lives and as usual if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up at the end and if you want a consultation then approach me through my website the link is there below and that's all bye bye <laughs> and yes before i begin as i say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you balance your material and spiritual lives all right so what is basically material and spiritual in a true sense there is no difference between material and spiritual in a true sense yes but when we are not in a very highly elevated state spiritually then it is essential for us at this level which we are most of us <laughs> it is essential that we make a distinction between material and spiritual yes in the initial years of our spiritual life i will explain this in detail which means that lord krishna says in the gita that a yogi a very elevated personality he will see pandita samadarshina he sees everybody equally yes which means that when you are very 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 highly elevated spiritually when your consciousness is totally absorbed in god brahma bhuta prasanna atma na sochati na kankshati sama sarveshu bhuteshu mad bhaktim labhate param lord krishna says in the gita that when a person is totally absorbed <laughs> in me at that time he attains peace yes so which means that unless we are very highly elevated we cannot see everybody equally yes which means we are not recommended to see everything equally unless we are at that stage which simply means that suppose we have a person who is sitting with us and he's talking nonsense all right he's talking about the opposite sex or he's talking about who is going to win the match all right <laughs> who is going to win uh, the gambling which is going on yes somewhere or who is having an affair with whom yes so such topics if somebody is talking with us then we cannot pretend that oh he is also a soul he is also a atma we should see him also equally that cannot happen at the initial stage because in the initial stage we are very much sensitive to material energy yes which means when we are starting our spiritual progress by taking some kind of a spiritual path then what happens is we will encounter people which means we will encounter friends family members colleagues and so many others <laughs> who will try to pull us back from from where we were initially yes suppose let me give let me give an example we had left eating meat suppose let's talk with examples so you decided that it's not good to kill animals so let's not eat meat all right and then what happens suddenly you meet a friend with whom you used to go and eat meat all right it has happened with me many times and then what happens that person calls you chal chal let's go we'll have again so that time you cannot say to yourself oh he is also spirit soul he is also atma he is also divine no you can't say that ha when you become sufficiently elevated spiritually yes then you can 
behave like that because then what happens you will not be affected or contaminated or destroyed by the association of that person yes but in the beginning days of our spiritual life if we behave like that that oh yeah yeah, yeah whatever you tell i will do yes i will go with you but i will not eat meat actually yes that can't happen so for me now i have left uh, eating meat 8 years back so now even if i go with a person who is eating meat even if i see that he is eating meat it doesn't disturb me yes why that is because in the initial stages i was very lucky i was very careful to cautiously avoid the association of such people who will eat meat yes i'm just taking meat as an example you can take for anything so that means the first thing you have to do is you have to make a distinction between the sinful activities and the activities which is between your duty which means that suppose there is a student who is studying in a university suppose so studying is a part of his duty yes so he cannot say that oh i don't want to study i am going to the forest that is not correct because then he is simply running away from his responsibilities yes that's not permitted but suppose he has studied and he has got a job and he has started working and he somehow does not feel even after long 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 years of staying in this material world that i want to do all these things now i want to do a job i want to earn money i want to have a family wife husband i don't want all this so then he or she goes to the guru and asks my dear guru maharaj i don't want to do all this should i still do <laughs> and then if the guru says yes you are not giving up your material duties just because you are not willing to do them or take responsibility but you have a sincere desire to do spiritual practices 24 hours then you can say that yes that person is capable of renouncing yes but that doesn't mean everybody has to do like that yes so the problem is in india many people think that spirituality is only for the celibates those people who are in safra yes they are either brahmacharis or they are sanyasis but if you read the scriptures you will be shocked or anybody who knows anything about the scriptures you will be shocked that most of the people most of them they are grihasthas which means they are householders yes i can go on and on giving examples yudhishthir maharaj is a householder arjuna is a householder draupadi is householder nakul is householder sadev is householder atri and anasuya they are householders yes atri is one of the rishis yes and then lord shiva is a householder lord vishnu is a householder there are so many householders my god and among the 12 mahajans which are stated in shrimad bhagavatam should i recite the shloka again swambhu narada shambhu kumaro kapilo mano prahlado janako bhishmo balir vaya saki vayam there are seven mahajans who are married all right and the remaining 12 minus 7 <laughs> they are not married so the majority people in this material world will be married all right so being married does not mean that you cannot practice it is simply an excuse which people give see what happens is sometimes uh, you go to couples and and then if somebody is married you may ask them oh we have this program can you come all right so they may tell you oh no 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 we have this program now we have this family program we have this we have that we can't come now when you say that you don't have time for something it's actually like saying you don't want to do that should i repeat the moment you say that i don't have time for something is equivalent to saying i don't want to do it yes any doubts <laughs> which means that when we are having a family yes there is no problem but we have to 
allot specific time slots within the day for our spiritual practices. That is the first step in balancing. Because to balance, you have to have something, right? If you are not having any spiritual practice in your life, then where is the question of balancing? See, this is like a person who says that, oh, I want to go to the gym, uh, but I can't go because I don't have time or I cannot balance. Suppose he says like this, the only problem for me in going to gym is I can't balance my na, studies and my aerobics. But that's very funny because he has has not even gone to the gym once. So without going to the gym, how do you balance the activities, right? Or how 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 is it an uh, imbalance? So which means that to balance your material and spiritual lives, first of all, you have to start doing something spiritual. Only then there is an imbalance and then you try to balance. All right. Now, within that, what will happen is, there will be a tug of war constant. Tug of war means sometimes you may find friends who are good. Good means they will not drag you to sinful activities, wrong activities which are not permitted by the scriptures because those activities will destroy you ultimately because scriptures are telling things for our good. It is not something dogmatic that somebody wrote. That's it. If you don't do this, you will go to hell. It's not like that. Take the example of smoking. If you smoke, who is going to die? See, Rishi Parashara is not going to die. Vyasdev is not going to die. Lord Krishna is not going to die. We are going to die, right? <laughs> so, whenever scriptures are telling something that don't do this, it is not for their sake. Yes? Some people say, oh, Rishis have written something. Nah, it was their perspective. We should not follow it. We don't need to follow. Yes, you can decide not to follow, but who will be the sufferer? Yes? And this is not fear mongering. This is common sense. And this is not something uh, which some people say, oh, religion is creating terror. Spirituality is creating fire. My God, this is destruction. No, it has nothing to do with that. Apply basic common sense. <laughs> Those who have common sense will understand whatever scriptures are telling is correct. Yes. Those who don't have, they will try to, as in Asmis we say, na, salai bara kubwa. <laughs> I don't know how to translate that in English. It's like beating around the bush. Yes. So the point is, in the uh, course of our spiritual journey, the first thing we have to do is we have to start doing some spiritual practices. Yes. And after that, we will realize that, oh, now what's happening is, night, I do this mantra. So recently, one of my friend and his girlfriend. <laughs> so... I suggested them that they should start chanting some mantras in the morning and in the evening. All right. Certain mantras I gave them to chant. And now they are chanting. So now what's happening is the family people, they are making a mockery of this uh, girl. Yes. So both of them are my very good friends. So that girl uh, told him that, oh, when I'm chanting this mantra, they are laughing at me. <laughs> My brother especially, he's taunting me. He's telling, hey, why are you listening to these na, old babas? These people are useless actually. This is 21st century. These, these, these old things don't work. Yes? These are old actually. We are in the new age. And surprisingly, this girl is a doctor. Alright? And her brother said to him, uh, to her that, you are a doctor. By being a doctor, how can you behave so foolishly that you are listening, oh, this mantra will do this, this mantra will do that. Be intelligent. <laughs> so that person thinks that being intelligent means you don't chant any mantra. And those who are chanting mantras, they are all fools. That's what is his definition of intelligence. All right. So now, I told this girl that there is one mantra which you have to chant three times in the evening and there is another mantra which you have to chant only once. So total four mantras in the evening. All right. So now she was in a very precarious state. All the family members are laughing at her. My God. Can you imagine you being 
the object of mockery <laughs> and that to inside your family that family which is supposed to help you to go close to god that fairy family is becoming the biggest obstacle for this girl so now what she did she told me that okay i will not chant three malas of that mantra i will chant one mala of that mantra and the other mantra which i was supposed to chant one mala that also i will chant once so instead of four i will chant two malas total i said to her that look today is fine you do it today you are feeling very uncomfortable that they are smiling they are laughing they are taunting they are giggling at you that's fine i understand but you have to understand what is happening when you are lowering your status they are getting more power yes is it not happening which means when your family or your friends they taunt you when you are doing something spiritual yes and then if you listen to them or you get fear and you reduce your standard just because they are making fun of you that's it because see what happens the moment you say no to something yes the next time to say yes becomes much more difficult so now what happens is thankfully she is out of the home for some time so now she is able to chant the mantras but my concern is again when you go home the again the same scenario will repeat yes so what to do so then i told her that okay what you can do is i mean i have not told her but i am planning to tell her like this that you can chant two mantras like that and when you go to sleep when everybody is sleeping then you chant the remaining two mantras for that mantra which you should chant three times yes so this is how you balance so there will always be problems <laughs> because practicing spirituality in kaliyuga is next to impossible remember and that's what i said in the beginning that you have to make this discrimination in the initial stages of your spiritual life of good and bad good and bad doesn't mean you are criminalizing a person no it doesn't mean that because somebody seeing this video may say oh now are you saying that her brother is a bad person no i'm not saying that although he is behaving like a stupid person because your sister is chanting mantras you don't want to chant that's perfect i understand you don't want to chant you are not interested perfectly fine there's no problem but who the hell are you to say no to your sister yes of course if you are a great knower of the scriptures you know everything na you know whatever is there in this universe everything you know then i can consider maybe but the question is when difficulty comes will you be able to protect your sister i don't think so <laughs> because certain things are not under our control yes only the divine can help us so when you view try to balance your spiritual life along with your materialistic activities it is very essential to understand that there will always be challenges yes and during that what happens you have to see what best you can do during that time and for that it is essential that you have you are in regular contact with your guru now she is in contact with me that is why i am going to give her this suggestion that two mantras you can chant later but suppose she was not in contact with me then what would she do she would do either one of the two things either she would show him and chant all the four mantras or she would give, give up at, uh, completely yes so whatever it is she may chant four malas or she may not chant at all that's not the point here the point here is you have to have a guru who can guide you practically in every situation because in the initial days of your spiritual life you will always feel we will feel that there are some unwarranted things which are happening unprecedented which means we didn't expect things to go like this because those people who you were always staying with happily smiling giggling laughing they will show their back to you <laughs> yes it will happen it has happened with me and so many of my uh, friends who have tried to go into some spiritual path that has happened 
सो द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग इज टू हैव अ गुरु हु कैन गाइड यू पर्सनली येस और सम सीनियर हु इज अ डिसाइपल ऑफ दैट गुरु बिकॉज द गुरु मे नॉट बी अवेलेबल टू टॉक टू यू ऑलवेज सो दैट इज हाउ यू नो दैट ओके बिकॉज देन द गुरु विल टेल यू और योर सीनियर विल टेल यू ओके दिस इज गुड दिस इज दिस इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल वैन शी आस्क मी कैन आई नॉट सेंड द मंत्रास टूडे आई सेट नो दैट इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल सो देन आई सेट ओके एट लीस्ट यू चैंड टू यू डोंट हैव टू चैंड फोर बट एट लीस्ट यू चैंड टू नाउ एंड वैन यू आर स्लीपिंग गो एंड चैंड द टू मंत्रास रिमेनिंग सो दैट इज ओनली पॉसिबल बिकॉज आई हैव टोल्ड हर अदरवाइज शी वुड हैव टेकन सम म्यूजिकल डिसीजन हर सेल्फ राइट so it means that when we are staying in this materialistic society yes which most of the people are in this world unfortunately then we have to know that always there will be struggles yes and always we have to balance somehow <laughs> so let me give you another example suppose you have a friend who is telling you oh we will go to this party today yes some function is there and you know once you go it will take you 4 hours and you will come home and you will be like i can't chant the mantras today yes so then what should you do should you say that no i will not go <laughs> or should you say that okay i will go and uh, today's mantras i will not chant no that also you can't do of course if i would face that scenario i would directly reject that offer and i would say i am not going to the party all right but may not be everybody can do like that so then at least you have to ensure that the time which is needed to chant your mantra suppose one hour is needed you come one hour before or you go one hour late something like that <laughs> you cannot afford to compromise on your spiritual practices if you are doing that it will not yield the desired results yes for entrance exam in india iit jwe upsc or any exam gate huh? we need so much hard work my god years 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 so how can we expect that our spiritual life will go like a rocket if we are reluctant or complacent or if we are not serious in our practices that can't happen right so when you think of balancing you have to understand there will always be some level of imbalance <laughs> and that balance cannot be completely restored but it can be managed yes and for that you need a senior who can guide you and also you have to understand that in the beginning days as i said we have to make the distinction so suppose you have one friend who is telling you that okay let's go to watch this movie okay and that movie is like a normal movie kind of i mean there not much uh, violence or there is not much vulgar scenes or it's not like a pornographic movie actually all right although most of the movies these days are unfortunately because there is no distinction nowadays that is pornography or this is non pornography i don't know but suppose your friend comes and tells you okay i want to go uh, i want to go uh, to see this movie suppose it's some normal movie na some romantic movie or something now in, in the initial days you have to decide yes oh should i go or not but suppose you decide to go that is okay but suppose there's another friend who comes and tells you oh that movie is there na and you know that's fully a uh, adult movie yes adult doesn't mean it's declared to be a pornographic movie but there's no difference i hope you understand <laughs> then you have to decide and directly say no to that person you cannot afford to compromise you cannot say oh no he is also spirit soul whatever he wants i will do that can't happen Gita says you should see everybody equally. Some other she who sees everybody equally. That can't happen, because when you do that, your consciousness will degrade. Your chitta is going down, down, down to the level of animals when you are indulging in these kind of activities. Then the next day morning you sit down for meditation and that's it. Everything is over. <laughs> Try to do these things and sit. to meditate next day morning you can write in the comments maybe about your experience <laughs> i will also see 
if there are some uh, great 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 personalities here who can watch an adult movie in the night and next day morning they can come and claim oh today i perfectly chanted my mantras yes that can't happen let's be honest here right let's be brutally honest that can't happen so let's not pretend like that but if that is a normal movie like um, some salman khan movie or some normal movie i mean i don't know i mean i've heard salman khan does not do those kind of scenes so i don't know i'm just giving an example i don't know i have not watched any of his movies from last seven eight years i don't know so if i've said something wrong please pardon me regarding salman khan okay so i don't know if he's also doing adult movies these days but i just give an example but if there are uh, actresses like uh, anyways i i will not take names <laughs> if they are doing movies and we are going and watching them it's like uh, watching an adult movie so that we cannot do we have to draw the line there we have to draw the line because in the initial days if you do not draw the line you will go outside of the line <laughs> as in ramayan there was this rekha lakshman rekha yes so sita devi crossed that lakshman rekha and she went lakshman had warned her whatever happens do not cross this boundary please <laughs> don't cross this and then of course ravana said that oh i will not go inside now you have to come and give me this whatever it is that's a different thing but what i am saying is you have to understand that if you cross the line ravana will come and snatch you <laughs> because one of my guru ma gurus he says you cannot touch the water and pretend to not get wet yes the moment you touch water you will get wet yes so in the initial days we need not be very uh, very uh, as they say na open minded that uh, you should not be so open minded that the mind itself falls out <laughs> which means we should not behave like a self realized yogi in the initial days yes oh there is nothing material and spiritual like everything is same like everything is like part of god this is sheer nonsense in the initial days ah but when you are highly elevated spiritually now suppose yudhishthir maharaj is there all right and then suppose let's take a imaginary scenario of the of the mahabharat imaginary scenario suppose there is a prostitute who comes to allure yudhishthir maharaj <laughs> suppose the imagine yudhishthir maharaj is walking somewhere and then there is a prostitute who comes and she tries to seduce yudhishthir maharaj well, what do you think she will be able to seduce him <laughs> no that's impossible in fact the opposite will happen he will start speaking about spirituality to this prostitute and then this prostitute will forget everything yes suppose yudhishthir maharaj meets a person who is drinking wine and that person tells him oh who are you you look good you want to taste <laughs> so what do you think he will say oh yeah give me also no he will not say that in fact by staying with him that drunkard he will leave drinking yes so if we are not at that level let us not pretend to be like that yes so in the initial stages it is essential that we make that distinction so there will be friends who will criticize us and will force us to do wrong activities we have to completely dis, uh, distance ourselves from them but suppose there is another friend who is like a good person who comes and talks to you about some other topics like oh what's going on in india and politics yes will india and pakistan have a war which they are discussing from last 60 70 70 years yes and then some some topic which is like not very serious yes which is not sinful which will not pull your consciousness down although that will also but that is like it's okay but if somebody is discussing about pornography with you yes or about oh somebody is having an affair you cannot afford to stay with that person that person will destroy you then there will be nothing left to balance <laughs> all right so to balance our spiritual life we need to understand that those people who are pulling us down into illicit sinful activities we have to completely give up their association otherwise we will not be able to make spiritual progress and those people 
who are not pulling us into sinful activities suppose a friend calls you and says oh let's go to this uh, hotel and eat something that's fine we can go with them we can have a normal chat no problem but if suppose a person a friend comes and says oh no there are 10 girls are coming there and we'll have wine and we'll enjoy with the girls so then you can't say yes <laughs> if you say that's it checkmate <laughs> so when you start your spiritual life it is important that we do this distinction all right so we will discuss more on this unlimitedly on this stupendously on this <laughs> okay and this is the first video which i have made so if you have any questions queries or comments regarding this video then please let me know and be patient all your queries will be answered yes so that is what i wanted to say have a senior or a guru who can guide you practically and start doing something spiritual only then the question of balance comes right if you are not doing anything at all where do you have the question of balance and for householders you don't have to go to the forest if you are married you have children you have a wife husband perfectly fine yudhishthir maharaj also had all right arjuna had four wives my god <laughs> can you imagine four wives my god and that too they are not ordinary wives here draupadi chitrangada ulupi subhadra my goodness all of them are like one one stalwarts <laughs> subhadra is krishna's sister draupadi we all know she was born from fire extraordinary and ulupi was the most beautiful prince princess of the uh, nagloka and then chitrangada was also extremely beautiful that is why her name is chitra angad which means once whose photo you see that gets imprinted in your memory for the rest of your life she was so beautiful so these four queens were there with him so you don't hear arjuna telling oh i think i should go to the forest no that, that's not required yes so for householders we need to make sure that we invest time especially in the morning but when is that possible when we sleep early right <laughs> if you are sleeping at 12 o'clock then we can't get up at 4 right and we cannot do our mantras but if we are serious in going close to god then we have to arrange our lifestyle in such a way that we are able to sleep by 10 or 10:30 or worst case maybe 11 depending on your schedule of course and then we can get up by 5 and then maybe one hour we can do some meditation yes and reading of the scriptures can be done in the evening yes that is a very good way to talk with your family members also by the gita tell your wife come here sit tell your son come here sit tell your daughter come here sit call your mother call your father and then you say today we will discuss the first shloka from the gita dharma kshetre kurukshetre samaveta yutsavaha mama ka pandavas chaiva kima kurvata sanjaya ha oh my god <laughs> and then you tell your husband my dear can you read the first paragraph yes <laughs> and if you have children then you say chotu now you read okay second paragraph <laughs> then you give opportunity to the mother and father also this is how you should stay in a family not that sitting and watching big boss together yes that's not how a family life is supposed to be big boss is what basically a bunch of uh, jokers sitting and doing nothing right and a bunch of other jokers helping uh, them to get money right because when we are watching they are getting money right so let's stop this business of jokers <laughs> what's happening in big boss so somebody is bitching about somebody oh he is having an affair there he is doing this he is doing that oh he said this he said that so what is it that you are going to gain out of these uh, jokes nothing else instead of watching comedy shows in the night instead of watching debates on india versus pakistan will they have a nuclear war which all know that they are never going to have right <laughs> So instead of doing all these things in the night or going in going to uh, every new hotel every day 
yes sit and open the gita and start reading householders okay so then all these questions will not come oh how do i balance my spiritual life how do i do this how do i do that even if it comes you will understand because krishna says in the gita that whenever somebody is very serious to come to me i give them the knowledge dadami buddhi yogam tam yena ma upayanti te that is what lord krishna says that whenever somebody is serious and he or she wants to come to me i give them the intelligence by which they can come to me <laughs> which means krishna will also give you a guru because as they say when the student is ready the master shall appear ready repeat when the student is ready the master shall appear because in the scriptures also it is said that by the grace of god you get a guru and by the grace of the guru you get god all right <laughs> it's a very 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 heavy statement so if you think that you will just get a guru that's not going to happen you have to have that sincere desire oh god i want to come to you please help me find some guru somewhere and then you see god does miracles and then by the mercy and the blessings of the guru you will also find god yes all right my god this has become like a session 36 minutes i can't imagine if somebody is bearing me till this end <laughs> okay Until next time wish you good luck and yes if you're new then please subscribe and if you like this video click the thumbs up and then if you want a consultation approach me through my website all right i will pause this video now bye bye see you and we will be doing more on this all right that's it tata see you